Okay. Um, a live um, um, I don't know, a, a thinking brain dump kind of thing. I just stirred. I used to do these when I um, saw something and, and thought, no, it's not. <laughs> and feel the urge, you know what I mean, to, to get on them and uh, say, no, 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 for me, it's not like that, you know. And um, so I saw yesterday something about somebody saying they couldn't draw. But they clearly could. And then went on to explain how they fixed it. And uh, that got me on the first thing about, you know, what he's drawing. And then the second one was this this morning about looseness of style. Um, and strangely enough, both things are connected. So, so on the one hand, this guy's solution for not being able to draw was to become more mechanical in his... Um, approach to be more considered and, and you know um, um, almost structural um, completely non-responsive kind of drawing it was you know it was it was it was habitual building techniques uh, which is what everybody does um, you know ellipses squares cones triangles whatever um, a million times and then you move on to the elements of the face and do the same and you know Till one day it becomes almost, as I said, a habit. Um, and then the other one about the uh, the looseness of style. And um, I, uh, they're wanting the same thing. The, the reason why, uh, if you want to take it to a mechanical solution, for instance, drawing is making marks that capture what you see, driven by what you feel. That's it. It's not. It's not, you know, so so you there are two parts to it. There is the mark making and there is the emotional response. So so that's what happens when you're an artist. That's what you see something, you employ mechanical techniques, but you apply them in relation to your emotional response. It's not just a mechanical technique, um, but it is for many. That's the, that's the dilemma, and, and it becomes like a, a meme almost. That that's what it must be, um, and um, uh, the looseness thing is really. Um, and you'll see. I know I keep taking getting this out, but you'll see that the looseness is. There's two things that happen on that eye, for instance. The looseness is just. You know, I don't care about the marks I make. I'm just, you know, at the moment I'm making the marks, I'm oblivious to what's happening. I'm just, you know, probably looking at the reference more than I'm looking or the subject more than I'm looking at what I'm painting. And it's just happening. Um, I don't care what brush I've got. I made a point when I painted this to use the biggest brush I could find and stick with it. I didn't want it to be, you know, me trying to find time. I mean, I eventually did use a smaller, I think I might use a smaller brush, but, but most of it was loose. Um, but it was loose because that's how I felt about the thing. It wasn't loose because it was a deliberation. I wanted to make it loose. I want to paint loosely and all that sort of thing. It's not, that's not how it works. It's a mindset thing. You know, um, if you want to talk about it in terms of, say, the, the masters like Cy Sargent, it would be accuracy, efficiency, and economy. So the accuracy is to get the thing in the right place. The efficiency is to use as little as possible to make that point. Um, and the economy is, is to only use what's necessary, which is what you're sort of seeing there. With that, it doesn't have to blend out. Doesn't have to, it's just a slight you know, indication of some kind of bag under his eye. Um, and so that, in technical terms, that's what. But I'm not conscious of that. So I'm just doing that, and it's just just a, a thing. Um, there's no. Uh, is it? Am I working fast? Am I working slow? You know, the fact that I use a big brush is that the the. Uh, no, the reason why I use big brushes is because I can't be bothered to keep changing brushes or cleaning brushes. I just use the big brush. I don't even, I don't even, and you know, rinse the paint out of the brush most of the time. So it, the whole thing is, is infected with other colours, which is why I have problems with white. Um, but that that the 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 looseness thing and the I can't draw thing are exactly the same the same questions really. Um, um, and funnily enough, <laughs> it's here. my son rebuilt an old coffee machine and uh, and I made coffee for the first time on this thing, and it was fantastic. Uh, then he thought, oh, I must know how to, I must learn how to be a barista. I must learn how to make coffee. 
And um, and so he went and learnt, and he got the knowledge, and then he made coffee again, and it was diabolical. So the knowledge had impeded his first, even though it was completely uh, untrained and all the rest of it, he just thought, this is what I do with it, and the coffee that came out was smooth, and it was it was delicious. The coffee that came out once he he knew that oh, it must be this pressure and he must compact the grains this much and all that. Once he knew all that, the coffee went down the pan. It became, but it wasn't. It was it was drinkable, but it was just your average kind of Costa coffee. It wasn't special like he had first, you know, he first started um, when he did it. So the knowledge thing kind of took away this this innate ability. I mean, it may have been beginner's luck. As people could call it, and that's, anybody who thinks that knowledge is the root you know, that you must have, without knowledge you can't do anything. Anybody thinks that would always say, "Oh, it's beginner's luck," you know. Um, uh, but who's to say that that beginner might keep repeating that luck? You know, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, so in terms of the drawing side of things, the fact that somebody thinks that, for instance, we I'm going to do a uh, this is just a quick one. I'm going to do a proper uh, one about alignment today. But let's say that that, that you thought that. The drawing thing was really um, this kind of mechanical thing that you're going to need to know how to do. And if you can't do this, um, these perfect lines and uh, um, uh, essentially do what I'm doing now, which is a much considered thing. And uh, I mean, I'm doing this. There's a little bit of my my technique in this as well, which is why it's so. Uh, <laughs> um, meandering, uh, but the, let's say it's it is all about the uh, you know the, the, the consideration of things. Um, the problem with this is that, and I'm doing this because um, of my style, this is not because of, of my approach, this is not because um, I've done any kind of uh preliminary training of such, you know, it's just the fact that I'm able to the biggest. The reason why this, when I've done that, that now and got things reasonably in the right place is the dots. Um, there is no other um, um, that sort of technical um, um, understanding other than where's this, where's this, where's this. You know, this is. This is the this is the dots in action, if you like. But I'm not I'm not uh, the dots for me. It, it doesn't. I don't draw the dots anymore. I'm just more interested in the proximity of things. Um, and I'm still I'm still doing all that. But as I say, I'm going to do an alignment thing today, so you'll see me talking about alignment. I use the same image, but but what I'm saying is that um, th that for me, I, I'm not truly connected to the, the subject, so it's not it's not strictly. Uh, what I would consider to be, you know, a responsive uh, thing. I'm trying to sort of prove a point in terms of the the, the drawing side of things. Um, it's still loose. It's still fairly uh, because of the meandering technique that I use. But but it's more of a drawing than if it was, for instance, say we were trying to draw the eye, and and somebody said to you, you're going to draw a circle like that. Right, and then you've got to understand the way that the the lid is positioned across the top there, and then you've got to do that to get the, the the corner of the eye right, and then you've got to put the, you know, if somebody told you to do all this mechanical stuff before you can get, um, uh, before you can you can draw, then most people would think that that's true, and that's everything everything you'll see. You'll have all you'll have to see one now. Someone's doing this and doing this, and and that's that's the the generally accepted route um but doing that and doing and uh and making it sort of you know dividing it all up and making it all this sort of thing and, and doing all the mechanical geometry stuff is no more drawing than this is this is as much drawing as that is um the mark making is kind of uh um founded in your response so so if if the if the mark making is simply um uh, part of the as i say part of the response uh, and you're observing properly then you will you will make marks that are relevant to what you see it can't you can't get around that it's uh, um but the trouble is that when you do that you're not you're not looking at that you're too busy constructing this and then you'll look at that and by which time you're going to make that 
fit this construction. So there's a big problem with that. Um, if you want to be a responsive artist and, uh, and and work in a responsive way, because you can't to be a portrait artist, the one fundamental thing you must be is responsive. You can't be a constructionist. Um, you can be a constructionist if you want to make replications, and that's generally what people will do. Um, and then the, the other ones would be uh, the projectionists and the and the tracers, um, but they're that's a commercial application and it's you know it's not necessarily um a responsive approach um it might be further down the line they may feel that they're making it responsive and they may also feel that they can loosen their line you know for whatever reason to 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 sort of you know amalgamate things and uh, and, and make the, the marks more gestural but on a basis of construction which is probably what you'll see. So people will say you construct it first and then you can then apply looser lines and bigger brushes and all the rest of it. My thing is you do that from the beginning. The, the main reason why is because the, they ha, they a line that does that, uh, that from the very beginning that really gets to the root of the of the of the feeling and the emotion and the is far more um, it contains far more life than this does. Even when you contrive it at the end, and you'll see there are various contrivances of all kinds where people will do highly finished and paint blue stripes over, stripes over it in some attempt to make it more creative. Um, but the, um, the trying to make it, sorry, trying to make it lively and full of life when clearly it wasn't to start with, is a contradiction. You're going to end up with, as I said, a contrivance. And it might be, and, and that might be described as a style. And the style is an evolution of something that comes from within. It's not something that you decide to adopt. It just becomes your style. And it's, there are so many things that influence that, your personality, your approach, you, you know, your, your thoughts on the subject, uh, all influence what will become your style. Um, I'm not so sure that influences of, of other by other artists, as somebody was said about looking at other artists, how they make things, how they do things, and and letting that embed within your stuff. I'm not sure that those kind of things should be um, um, consciously adopt, adopted because the the um, uh, we subconsciously adopt. Um, uh, style um style elements or execution elements we've got subconscious to do that anyway so you can't you can't get away from that you'll see something you'll like something it gets embedded within you and then it manifests in within your work you, you can't get away from that just as you can't get away from um going to a, you know somewhere like paris or some famous city and then and then feeling um the sort of the weight of the culture in your in your um you know your your approach. You can you can it will manifest in some way. But that's it. That's how we are. We're we're kind of sponges of, of things, and then it, and then it manifests in what we do. So, um, but the, going back to the drawing thing, you can draw. There is nothing you can't necessarily draw like somebody says you should draw. But that's that's that shouldn't be the case anyway. You know, if someone says that you can't draw like so-and-so or you can't draw like me or whatever then you're probably um, in the wrong company but <laughs> but they're not the people that you want to what you want to listen to you want to be the child and i say this all the time you want to be the child that makes marks regardless you know before the adults tell them that that, that cow doesn't look like a cow you want to be the, the child again so you've got to find that place um, and believe that you can draw nothing you know there's nothing drawing isn't a a, a, a it, it could you could describe it as a supernatural thing because it comes from within something that that we find um, difficult to um, comprehend, you know, because it's a creative act, um, and and people might try and uh, rationalise it, but that you shouldn't really. Um, in the same way, you shouldn't really think that. Um, um, making gestural marks or making um marks that are loose uh, and it's a terrible word that that loose marks thing but let's say more gestural marks um thinking that they are a contrivance uh, they're not 
the, the, the reason why those kind of lines have more life in them is because they are your visceral response. That's what it is. And if you and if you try and do that, you know, make that deliberately, it never works. They always look deliberate. Um, so that's that's a, a thing. I, I think that probably is something you shouldn't really consider. I don't think that, that um, it's required that you should um, think that you should have a looser style. Your 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 problem really is the style. Your your understanding of what style is that that's the that's the problem. Um, the, if if somebody says that to me, invariably, and I want to lose the style, invariably I can tell what kind of journey they've had, and it's been more um, a technical thing. You know, it's been more about oh, I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, learn to draw squares, square circles. I'll understand about how light to cast shadows and all that kind of thing. Generally, those sort of people will say one day, uh, I want a lose the style, um, and. It, it's it's difficult, and they'll think it's a technical thing, so they'll start using bigger brushes and, and paint standing up, you know that kind of thing. But it's not; it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, 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 almost like a, a thinking process that determines um, thinking in in, ten, in terms of uh, understanding, not in terms of uh, knowing. And um, and I think that that's probably an infection of everybody. I mean, it's it was an infection of me. I mean, I'm not sort of uh burdened by that anymore but i'm um i, I think that the the, the general uh, anybody coming to this anybody learning to draw you're gonna always be inhibited by these perceptions and um and seeing things like people saying i, I can't draw and this is what i had to do to fix it that's fine for them but don't take it on and think it's you as well um it's it's different for everybody this is the whole point this is why um, it works so well. This is why having the kind of attitude that says, um, "This is my; these are my marks. This is this is what I do. This is how I respond to something. Take it or leave it." Kind of thing. Um, that's that's really important. That you have that that kind of mindset because everything will grow out of that. Whatever whatever um, you um, you know you create, however you create it, it, it will come from that clarity, that kind of um, acceptance and clarity. Which again, it's 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 almost like the, the the doing thing is a secondary factor. It's almost like the you know we um, we're able to do um, what we can do because of things other than our dexterity or our you know our um, uh, um, knowledge. It's it is really a, a more than just that. And the people that give into that are the people that succeed. Um, the people that actually think it's some kind of engineering feat that it's some kind of um, process that's a, that's a terrible word a terrible word for what we do it's a process um and people think like that will always struggle um to get any kind of purity in what they do regardless of whether it's effective or not whether or not it's a perfect portrait or not the the the, the this thing of of um Um, thinking of it as a sum, you know, a mathematical equation, a formulaic approach is always going to result in the kind of anti-art thing um, because it's it's going to have too much, it's going to have too much thought in it. I mean, this, you hear this all the time. People will say that it's overworked. I'm overthinking it, we'll say. And that's, tr that's true. That's exactly what they're doing, overthinking it. Just, just do it. I mean, I say this so many times. Just do it. We can't. We, you have to find a way to connect to your creative soul, um, and, and the best way to do it is not to try and do it. Um, so it's, it's it's not to try and draw, not to try and draw in a particular way, or not to try and draw something because it will lead to something else. Because somebody said that if you do this over and over again, then you will be able to draw. Um, and now those kind of in, I always think of infections, and this is the this is the danger of, of, of YouTube. It's it's full of stuff like that, um, and I, I, I hate to think how many people's you know ability or, or um, um, creative potential is hindered by somebody else's predictions. 
you know, and prophecies. And uh, this is, this is, you know, and dictates, you know, this is what it should be. This is how it should be. I mean, we have enough of that with what people put in galleries. Somebody decided that that, you know, was a masterpiece. And then we have to accept it, you know. I mean, I don't mean literally, consciously um, accept it. Uh, it is there, nailed on a wall for us to see. And that's decided that that's a, uh, a, a masterpiece, therefore, and this person knows what they're talking about, so therefore it must be. You know, it's that kind of thing. But I'd question everything. I would I would say, hang on a minute, no, it's not. Not, 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 it's not a masterpiece to me because my criteria is, is specific and I've got specific requirements of, of what can we can. In fact, I wouldn't consider anything really a masterpiece. I don't really know what that means. I think great honest art is great honest art and I love it, uh, regardless of their, you know, the status of the person that did it. Um, it's the purity of intention thing for me and I, I can see that. I see that in, in, um, in, in work, I see that in art, and and I think that um, you know people kind of get swept along, you know, in the in the in the mayhem of um, of dictate as I say dictates and um, and um, I, I don't know. I, I as I say, I, I think that the going back to what I'm saying about the drawing and things, the um, um, <sighs> you can't make the decision that you can't draw. Um, it's not, it's just not something that is even a, a, a you know, a, a thought to be had. Can I draw it or can't I draw it? It's not, you know, um, it's not the right, it's not the right question. The, the question probably comes from, I can't draw like so and so, I can't draw like, I can't make a photo replication, I can't, you know, the question comes from those kind of, um, uh, scenarios where you're putting yourself under some kind of pressure to say, that it has to be as good as somebody else. So it's inevitably it's a comparison. Um, so you can't say that I can't draw um, and truly and truly be able to draw because to be able to draw is, as I said, is this thing of um, making marks driven by what you feel. And um, if you're doing that, you'd never ask the question, can I draw or can't I draw? You'd never have that. You'd only make the, the assumption that you can't draw, or the, you know, draw the question um, if if you're comparing yourself to someone else. Uh, and then the other thing about the the which is completely connected the the um, looseness, uh, which is probably gestural. Um, that's the same thing. That's driven by the same intention, by the same um, desire to capture something that you feel. Uh, regardless of its efficiency, regardless of its its, um, its accuracy, so um, and the, its execution, because that's a, that's a, another thing as well. If execution becomes the the um, the gatekeeper for your success, then then you're always going to be on a on a roller coaster of uh, learning and practice and, and whatever else, and thousands of drawings and and and, uh, and repetition. You're always going to be doing that, keeping sketchbooks. Because it's always going to be, I've got to learn a bit more. The reason why it's not working is because I don't know enough, you know. And it's never that. You always know enough. That That's the thing. You always know enough because you're human. And the thing that drives what we do in, in terms of creativity is your humanness, <laughs> if, that's a, if that's a word. Um, it, is, it is always about your human response, which is why I'm attracted to portraits, because connecting with other humans is one of the you know the key things that i enjoy and everybody everybody can do it to be able to connect to someone else and feel their emotion and things everybody can do that um unless you've lived in a cave and which is you know, sort of solitude and all that and uh, and damage yourself in that way because you cut yourself off from humanity but if you've if you've spent time with anybody family friends or however uh, you've learned skills to connect with other humans and and uh, and detect their mood and to um, respond to their mood. Now, just channel that into your mark making, and all of a sudden you're making portraits. And uh, and that and that really is, is it's as simple as that. There's an overcomplication of, of um, analysis of what you do, um, and inevitably analysis leads to comparison. And all, all that is 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 a real problem for most people, 
But as I said, I didn't really, this is, I've said it was it would be a rambling event. This is not really um, anything other than that. I just wanted to talk about the line thing, the drawing thing. Um, yeah, you can draw. I, I, you have my permission. This, this is the, this is the thing as well. You got to give yourself permission to draw, uh, to make marks that really may or may not work. You've got to give yourself permission to do that, um, regardless of the outcome. I saw somebody. I always talk about zero expectations. Saw somebody the other day who said that the outcome was in, inconsequential. He said, and uh, I thought, well, I've heard that before somewhere. Anyway, um, but that's that's. That's it. It's it's that giving yourself permission. Just do it, and and don't question whether you can or you can't. That's that's what do, where does that lead to? Well, that leads to self doubt, obviously. So so that that is a you know um, a real. You can see how all these things connect. You can see why people have so many problems. It's because they 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 um, uh, think too much about it generally, uh, and they put themselves under so much pressure. And um, and there's, it's not there's no need. As I said, th as far as the looseness of style, just be careful with that kind of thing, because um, if anybody's telling you they can tell you how to loosen up your style, then generally they don't know what they're doing either. So I would I would keep keep, keep clear of anybody who says that kind of stuff. Um, looseness of style, finding your style, you know, all that kind of thing. It, that's that's. That's the that's the wrongness of what you know what we do. They're all that manifesting those things. The fact that people say things like that, you know, I want to I want to I want to adopt a style. I want to the style. The thing about style is that it finds you. Your style finds you. It's a consequence of so many and other things. It's not something that you can contrive or to copy or, or whatever else. It just it, it will just find you. And that and that's a you know a, a fact. You just got to accept that that's what's going to happen. And, and and not even consider it really. Um, that, I don't think you should consider my style. My style is, you know, where does that stop? My style is that I use certain brushes. My style is that I always paint certain faces. My style is I always use a certain kind of frame. Um, you know, there's all where does where does, it, where does it stop all that? I don't I don't think great artists would ever think like that. That um, that it is a, a a contrivance of so many things that um and and i you know i see i saw i told you the other, the other week about that guy that there was amazing western scenes and what have you and i was pulled over by his deliberation you know down to his the way that the subject you know obviously chosen for a reason the way that he treated the subject chosen for a reason the way that he released his art into the market chosen for a reason i was just in awe of this guy's control of all the aspects of what he did um for me it's just a explosion a splurge or just a something that happens um but this was just on another level um and it's hugely successful for, for obvious reasons um because you you know you play the market like that um give them what they want um um you manipulate their desires you know all that kind of stuff really clever really clever stuff um but as i said even if you know if you want to do that then fine i think that's a great thing to do but i'm um, for me I, I just want to make a bit more of a my response to things i want it to be more um about me and a bit about a less about you know manipulating others to um consider what i do um to be great art and uh and just just really i don't know um like i say purely selfish just about me it, it really is that that's the i suppose the the bottom line is just it's just about me i'm i'm i've got a, a day today of, of putting things in folders and uh because the folders arrive so i would put all the drawings in folders and uh other than that i've nothing else to do but I'll just be painting and drawing, and I'm going to do this video about um, uh, alignments. Um, but essentially, it's just about me. It's not. I'm not thinking. Oh, I'm going to do something to sell. Or I mean, I'm going to do the alignment thing because I think people. Um, it's very simple to align things, yeah, and that's a a big thing. I mean, I 
the 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 down the, the, the downside to the the mechanical is that you, you consider things like you know the tilt of her head for instance and that's a word that some of the students use that tilt um the angle of things um is um a kind of it's the downfall i think it's the it's the problem you know and as soon as you start considering the tilt of things and the angle of things and you know all that sort of thing is it's because it's difficult, you know. When you know when people have, and I'll, I'll talk about the alignment thing, and when we'll I do this in the alignment. But when people do um, consider uh, things like that, you know, alignment angles of things, and do that, um, that that's really difficult to do. It's a bit like this sort of thing, you know. When you do that, it's really difficult to do. It's not bit charcoal, but um, because you can't maintain your posture and your arm length and all the rest of it, so inaccuracy is innate in the in that kind of uh, that kind of um uh, thing the people who can do it well it's because of their observational accuracy it's not because of their ability to hold the pencil the right length they they have observational accuracy which is developed over you know hundreds of years thousands of drawings um but they um to get around the, this alignment thing it's such a simple you know, it's always about, as I said, observation accuracy, but it's always about this um, comparative thing. So I'll talk about that in the in the in the uh, in the video. But as I said, I'm just going to please myself today. Other than that, and I'm I'm still going to please myself. And I'm doing that anyway. So so that's that's kind of the point of it for me. Uh, it might be not the point of, for other people. Um, but I'm I completely get that, and uh, and I admire what they do, providing they don't start whining because they wish they could do it a different way um because you can do it any way you like there's no nothing stopping you as i said do it for yourself don't do it for other people um unless there's motives you know money <laughs> fame glory all that kind of stuff but if 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 it's not that and i don't think that oh, should be a you know a trophy driven thing look it shouldn't be a competition either but that's another matter but um as I said, it's um, it should be it should be you first, everybody else second. That's how it works. Uh, it doesn't work any other way. You artists have to please themselves first. And if what you you produce when you please yourself isn't acceptable to other people, then that's fine. That's that's probably a sign that you're doing it right. Um, anyway, but going back to the two things: the, the can you draw or can't you draw? Yes, you can draw. You can draw. Don't don't think that for a minute that because you don't do it like somebody else that you can't draw it, it's it's the wrong question you should never ask that question and as far as the looseness of your style um that is really just a mindset it's more mindset than it is anything else it's not a mechanical issue so don't think that you're going to loosen your style for whatever reason or for whatever um thinks that you you know whatever makes you think that you should i'm not sure what you know, if you ask that question, maybe you've got, you know, from from the onset, you've had the wrong mindset, because it's not really something. I know I want, so I want to lose my style. You may be attracted to other people's work or have a looser, sort of more gestural style, and that's again a flaw, because somebody else's style is somebody else's style. It's not your style, um, and and again, you know, an artist that's going to ask that kind of question really um, hasn't got the whole thing you know what art's about so I, I um i just be careful of that i think at the end of the day what i'm saying is be careful of the questions that you ask yourself um and the decisions you come to based on how you become you know how you come to the decisions uh based, or answers to those questions that you ask yourself because sometimes you'll you come to a decision based on the wrong um the wrong logic or the wrong uh, reasoning so i'm um, uh you know it's probably at the end of the day, it's probably better just not to ask yourself questions about what you're doing, um, and 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 it you know it'll turn out however it will turn out. But again, this is back to the zero expectation thing. So so just as I say, I, I don't want to ramble on too much. Obviously, I am now. So I'm going to leave it to that, and I will uh, catch you if I do another live. I might do a live later, but I'm going to do the alignment video today, so you'll see that popping up at some point um yeah so 
it's it's currently uh, 8 39 in the uk so have a good day if in the, in the uk or have a great evening wherever you are anywhere else so whatever time zone you're watching it in make something great 